Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some of my favorite SSH tricks and tips. So let's get started. So for those of you guys who are watching this, you probably know what Secure Shell is already. So I don't really have to go into detail explaining it. But I am going to show you some of my favorite uses of Secure Shell. And this is no means a huge coverage. This is only like covering the surface. There's so much more you can do with Secure Shell. And if you want me to cover more of this topic, let me know down in the comments below. But before that, a word from my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using it for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime, I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access so not only do they have a 30-day money back guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose so in today's setup i'm actually going to be using a raspberry pi that has secure shell set up so it's a default raspberry pi os setup with a ssh server and honestly this is what i still use my raspberry pi 2 for because it doesn't require much to run it and it just allows me to have a connection second on my desktop i'm actually going to be running my windows vm because this is more going to be like a windows connection to uh, SSH Linux server. So here we have it. I have a couple of things pre-installed on my desktop, which is PuTTY, uh, WinSCP, uh, VLC Media Player, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go through the list of what I'm doing. But first, we should connect to our SSH just to make sure everything is running. Now, to connect, I would use PuTTY and just type in the IP address of the actual device. And this is the first time I'm logging in, so I haven't done anything to it yet. User is Pi and Raspberry because that's what we're connecting to. And there we have it. Uh, basic secure shell. So now I could do whatever I want. Obviously, you guys are familiar with this. So first, I'm going to begin with opening X or X11. If you guys are not familiar with that, it allows me to forward windows. So if I was to open a PuTTY session, all right, pop into the IP address that we were just talking about. But before we log in, we will actually go into SSH over here and X11 and we could enable X11 forwarding. Now, we do need to have Xming installed. So Xming is an X server for Windows, which allows you to run Linux GUIs. So after you install this, it would actually have this little thing on the bottom right called Xming, and we know the server is running. So this allows us to basically open Linux X applications. So with this forwarded, I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna log back in. And we could try something small just to see if it's gonna work. Let me think. Chromium browser. I'm not even I'm not even going small. I'm just gonna go for a browser right away. And once we wait for this to open and transfer all the stuff, we should actually see an X Windows open up. And there we have it. Now this is actually running directly from the Raspberry Pi itself, and it's actually forwarding everything through SSH. And you could open browsers, you could open software that you develop, you could open some Raspberry Pi um, 
apps that you have in there. So you're basically forwarding the application through the SSH tunnel. So this is a use case scenario that I use sometimes where I would need to open up a browser on a Linux server or open some program on a Linux server because it requires a GUI. So that's what I would use that case for. The next thing I use SSH for a lot is SCP or SFTP. Both I kind of find this very similar because I could log in both ways. So if I do say SCP, I could type in the host name and this program is called WinSCP and I'll leave a link to all the programs I'm using. So WinSCP allows you to use SSH to copy files over like a file manager. This way I don't have to type it into command. It's just much easier. So I am going to use, type that in, put in my username and put in my password. And there we go. We're going to be able to log in. And now I can see the folder. Like you see it's home and pi. And I can actually see my computer over here. So what I'm actually going to do is transfer over a file which is my intro. And I'm just gonna upload this to that location. And that is it. Now I have everything transferred over and it's as easy as that. I use this a lot actually, because WinSCP is just so easy to navigate through and it's very familiar. So now that we got the file transferred over using WinSCP, I should be able to LS and list structure and see that my file is there. Now, another cool thing that you could do, which I do this sometimes as well because I, you know, do YouTube um, and I run a lot of Linux computers, is that you can actually stream content over SCP. Now, to do that, you would do open network stream, SFTP, and in here you would type in the username and password. So it's pi colon raspberry would be the password at 192, you know, the IP address. And at this point where the folder is going to be, so slash home slash pi slash intro 3.mp4. And I should be able to open that up and it should be able to run my stream. There we have it. The first couple of seconds is black on my intro. That's how I faded in. But I literally just streamed over media through SSH and that's how you would do it. Now, next is a pretty big one where I actually thought it was common knowledge on this, but uh, I was made aware on my Discord channel that it, it's kind of not, is um, port forwarding. One of the biggest things you could do with SSH is port forward your connections. And to do that, you actually could use PuTTY or you could do uh, SSH commands. Simply put, I'm just putting in the IP address here first. I'm going to go over into SSH. I'm going to go over into tunnels. And here you can actually port forward. So you're connecting to SSH from this one particular IP. Once you connect to it, all you have is access to that SSH. But if you want to be able to access like other stuff on that same network, say like you have a Minecraft server or RDP or something that you're hosting on a different computer in the same network as that SSH, you could do it through here. The source port would be uh, anything that you would need to connect to from your physical machine here. So I would do local host all right, which is this machine, colon, and the port number. So let's do 7,000, okay? Now the destination is where you would have to put the IP address of that particular computer and that particular port that you wanna forward to. So source, then destination. So in destination, I know that I have something on uh, 159. So I would do 159 over here. And the port, I would put colon again, is 3389, which is VPN. Uh, now I would add and it would show up like this. Actually, I kind of put an extra, nope, that's right, L over here like this. And if I open the connection, and if I want to connect to it, now that the connection is open and that port is actually forwarded, I could do remote desktop connection and local host port 7000, because that's what I forwarded, and it should be able to hit my RDP server on that particular IP and it shows up as local host. And this is the server I actually run my space engineers on. So yeah, it's a Windows server and that's how you would do port forwarding. And what's crazy is you could do as many as you want. So if I open up PuTTY, go over to SSH, go over to the tunnels, in here I can 
add as many ports as I want. So one connection to through this SSH could open multiple ports. You just have to define it in a sense where source port would be 7000, the next one would be 7001, the next one would be 7002, and the destination would be your Minecraft server 1, Minecraft server 2, your RDP, or your router, or whatever it is. You could keep adding as much as you want. So this will allow you to forward all your ports just like we did over here. Now, I haven't updated this computer, that's why it's been running on Welcome right now, so I can't really show you how the desktop looks. But ultimately, we got the connection working, or I would have denied it, and that's how you would port forward. This is particularly interesting if you are running servers and you only got that one port open, and you can't you know, reach anything else you want. I use this a lot, like almost religiously. As soon as, watch this, as soon as I kill the connection, so I'm gonna minimize this over here, and I kill this putty, that's it. I lose connection over to that local host set port 7000. Now, last but not least, since I still have the connection to the Raspberry Pi, this is another thing that I love doing, which is sharing your SSH session or connecting to another SSH session remotely over the internet. So what I mean by this is that uh, there are times where I need to help someone configure something on their server through SSH, or sometimes I wanna show something on my end to someone and I need to share my SSH. And to do this simply, you could use this software called Tmate. T-M-A-T-E. So sudo app update, just to get the latest repositories, because this is a fresh install of Raspbian, so I'm pretty sure I don't have the latest packages yet. Once done with that, we could do sudo app install Tmate. Hit yes. And this is a remix of Tmux. So if you're familiar with Tmux, it's similar to this, but it's made better. This is something I like to use instead. And it's really, really cool. Let me show you guys. So now I have a session open with SSH through my Raspberry Pi and say I want to share it to a friend or I need some help configuring something that I don't know and I want them to hop into my session. What I would do is teammate. So here we have teammate, all right? So if you want, you could actually just connect through this connection. So I could just SSH into this. So basically, if I was to go here, grab putty, paste the connection, and I should be able to open this and connect to it no problem. So now I have another session open connected to this and I can use another computer to do this as well. Or show message. And in show message, it actually gives me a HTTP web session. I could actually connect this through the website itself instead of having to download PuTTY or do whatever I need. Actually, you know what? Let me close this extra, extra terminal that I don't need so I could resize that grab the SSH web session, so right over here. And if I needed to, I could go into Firefox over here, pop into that teammate session, and there we have it. I am connected right into the session using the web URL. And if I do LS, you could see over here, it lists the structure as well. So this is a thing that I use a lot of right now, uh, which is Teammate, and it allows me to share connections, borrow connections, look at connections, help someone configure something if I needed to. So this is one of my favorite tools recently to be using a lot. Well, anyway, that's it for me, guys. Those are my five favorite use cases for SSH. And again, if you guys want me to dive a little bit more deeper, like setting up passwordless entry, two-factor authentication, uh, VPN tunneling, stuff like that, let me know down in the descriptions below because all those take a little bit more time to explain what we're doing and how to configure. But yeah, in SSH world, there's a lot of things you could do. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.